everybody, it's me, Cody, on Microsoft, where today I'll be showing you Windows 10 build 15007 for PC and mobile. This build is the latest fastering build for Windows Insiders as part of the Future Creators update, which is expected to come out sometime of spring this year. I will note that these builds are buggy, and I wouldn't recommend installing them onto your main device. Many users have reported issues installing this build onto their PCs, uh, getting stuck at 0% indefinitely. Um, if this is the case for you, try restarting your PC and checking for updates again. I, I tried this a couple of times and eventually got it to install. This build, as far as I've noted, has mostly been extensions onto features that we saw with the last Insider Fast build, 15002. Adding onto the new setting tabs aside feature that we saw in 15002, 15007 has continued this by adding a share button to sets of put aside tabs. In the ellipsis button, you can now share huge groups of web links to anyone you wish. I'm sure that your friends will be very glad to see this. Downloading programs or installers in Edge will now give you the option to run that file without having to save them first. A nice way to get to your downloaded files quicker, and at the same time keeping your downloads folder clean. The web inking experience in Edge has been redesigned to match the layout of other Windows Ink applications that we've seen so far. The tools are now at the right and include all the different colors and toggles that you're familiar with in the Windows Ink workspace. Now the next addition I'd like to show, but I can't access this section without the browser crashing. Um, but what it is is further support for importing info from other browsers. You should be able to import your favorites, browsing history, and saved passwords from supported browsers into Edge with this new panel. Apps for Websites has been noted to be supported in this build again. I'm not aware of any apps that I'd be able to demonstrate this with, but basically it means that websites that support web-to-app linking will be able to open in an associated app. It's always a bit awkward talking about the Windows Continuum because that word has been attributed to so many different things as time moves on. Device continuity, though, is being extended with this build of Windows 10. With the help of your very own digital personal assistant, Cortana will now be able to help you resume your web or document editing experience when moving from one Windows 10 PC to another. Let's say that I was reading an article on another PC before I logged into this one. Cortana now should be able to send a little web link of that article into Action Center so I can continue reading that page on this PC. Um, I don't have multiple PCs with this build installed to demonstrate, but you can go ahead and try it out for yourself. Continuing on inline additions with this build, developers now can push out toast notifications with progress indicators from their apps. For whatever they want to use them for, toast notifications and action center listings will now be able to show progress bars. As the Windows 10 user interface is designed to work for both touch and mouse input, it can sometimes be difficult to adapt the UI to adjust between them on the spot. In apps that use the Windows 10 Creators Update SDK, most notably in the apps that were updated with this build, you'll notice that the scroll bar remains as unobtrusive as possible, yet still visible when you hover the mouse above the scrolling region. The scroll bar will remain this way as you scroll with your mouse or touchscreen, but if you want to interact with it directly, it will adjust its state when moving the mouse near the scroll bar. I think that this will help apps look more clean, and at the same time making sure that they're easy and familiar to interact with. We saw a new part of the Windows snipping tool in the last build with the key command Windows key plus shift plus S, and now again we're seeing some modifications with it with the ability to use it without the mouse. You can now navigate the snipping tool with just the keyboard with the key command Alt plus N to enter the kind of snip and the arrow keys to select the points. Following the same order of the 15002 video I put out a couple of days ago, we move on to Windows settings. I notice that there's a new holographics section in the settings page now, and not sure why that's there because I have never connected a holographic device to this PC, um, but it's there, and completely devoid of any configurable settings, so I'll pretend that it doesn't exist for now. For users with devices that support Windows Hello's facial recognition, an example of which not being the device that I'm using, you can explore a newly designed Windows Hello setup page, which provides real-time feedback on the state of the setup process which should be absolutely lovely. Under personalization on the themes page, there is now a store icon at the bottom, which in the future should redirect you to the Windows Store to download more themes. These, of course, consist of free to download theme packs that can have multiple wallpapers, sounds, colors, and even mouse cursors saved with them. 
I can't get the store themes collection to open, um, and the button on the bottom of the themes page doesn't do anything yet, uh, but here's a glimpse of what the page looks like. As you can see, the page hasn't gone under the scrutiny of any graphic designer yet, though I'm sure by the time that the page is fully implemented, this will be rather nice looking. It is, however, the page dedicated to the personalization of the Windows 10 aesthetic. For those, though, that want to explore themes more, there's always the old Windows personalization gallery site from the days of Windows 7. You can look it up on Bing, and it has a large list of different Windows theme packs, of course, which you can download and apply to the theme settings page in the settings app. Alright, so moving on to mobile. Mobile has seen a small handful of changes in this build, most notable of these being spontaneous hard crashes every 15 minutes or so with the device idling. So yeah, I sort of discourage you from installing this build on your mobile device if you are thinking about it, uh, much less on your daily driver, um, because I've had a bit of a unreliable experience with it so far. As for less notable changes, you'll find that the way Edge handles zooming in on websites has changed. You may have noticed that many mobile sites have defined zoom settings that Edge would have previously respected. Now Edge will disregard these settings and allow users to zoom into websites up to 500% magnification. Because of this, ease of access text magnification no longer applies to mobile sites, and you can just zoom in on things to magnify them. A small statement to the inclusivity at Microsoft, the rainbow flag has been added to the list of emoji on the Windows keyboard. This isn't specific to mobile, but I feel like mobile users use emoji a bit more often. Like we saw in previous PC builds, you will now be able to sync your settings and sign into Cortana using an Azure Active Directory identity, such as a work or school account. I imagine that this will be nice for devices that you use but are owned by your school or organization. In the settings under the New Apps section, we'll find probably what is my favorite addition to mobile so far, the ability to reset apps. Uh, this is something that we've already had on PC for a while now, but on mobile now, you can reset any app if it's not performing particularly well, which I'm sure many of you will find useful too. The storage page in the settings has also received the same UI redesign that we saw in an earlier PC build, which in my opinion looks a bit nicer. Again, with the parallels to 15002, the same Bluetooth and devices page that we saw is now on mobile as well. You'll be able to set up all your different devices here, which is quite nice. Anyhow, this has been a quick build update video with me, Cody, on Microsoft. If this video was helpful, make sure to subscribe and check out onmicrosoft.com to continue receiving updates about the future of Windows 10, Windows 10 Mobile, and the future Windows 10 Creators update. Thank you, goodbye.